Well, here we go. You know, this is a new technology. I'm recording on what they call MIVO, M-E-V-O, new high-tech, high-definition camera, and I'm able to watch it on the screen. So as I learned uh, this a little bit, Valerie, who's running the operation here at the Minneapolis Television Network, she said it would take me five minutes to learn how to do it, and uh, she's right. But she set it up for me now, so I'm uh, coming right to you. And in the future, I'm going to live stream or whatever it is that gives me high definition right to you. That's what I'm going to do. You know, um, as you can see by my card, I'm Leslie Davis, and I am a candidate for governor of the state of Minnesota. Right at the moment, uh, uh, in this time of year, we're not quite ready to uh, select all the names that are going to be on the ballot, but within about a month or so, we'll have the final group that's going to be on the actual ballot in November. I'm excited about that. You know, I'm an independent candidate. Real tough challenge for me uh, to win because the big money gets shoved into the Democratic Party or to the Republican Party. I should call them the DFL because they're not terribly democratic, especially the way they treated me a few years ago. But I'm going to try to be really positive and let them live and be well, and uh, I will. But when people see and hear my issues and realize how economically beneficial it is going to be to them, then they'll come away. They don't have to announce uh, to the DFL uh, party or the Republican who they voted for. They can have the House and the Senate as far as I'm concerned. I want to control the executive branch of the state of Minnesota, which will allow me to uh, manage the various departments, commerce, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, Department of Natural Resources. You know, there's about 20 departments. The governor appoints the head of those agencies. They'll administer it uh, at my direction. That would be real exciting. That would be such a revolution for Minnesota. It would be so great for people and children. Uh, I can't express uh, my excitement at just thinking about uh, being a governor, aside from having a uh, real nice place to live over on Summit Avenue. I wonder if they still have that pool table in there that was in there when Ventura was there. Did I say Ventura? I thought I was never going to say that name again, and now I've said it twice. Okay, so the Department of Commerce is going to be under the management of the governor. The governor doesn't make law. The legislature makes laws, and the government has, to, government has to sign off on it. And if he doesn't like it, he could veto it, and then the legislature can override it, if so on. But the Commerce Department, which is really uh, what I'm after, is going to be my department. The Commerce Department, they uh, view the powers, they control the powers under which state chartered banks operate. Not the national banks, there's two sets of banks, there's even three or four, credit unions and stuff like that. We're going to talk about national banks like Wells Fargo, U.S. Bank, etc., and then the ones I'm talking about, which are state chartered banks. Not owned by the state, but just somebody comes along, if you've got a couple of million bucks, you fill out the charter and you can have a, a bank and they will oversee you. They'll audit you, they'll look at you, the Department of Commerce, not the federal government. The only involvement with state chartered banks that I'm aware of that the federal government is involved in is the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. They insure depositors' money. There's not that much money to insure these days because people are short of money. They don't have enough to deposit. And besides, they're hardly paying any kind of interest. But the important part about the Department of Commerce, I want to change one of the rules under which they operate, and that's to allow, or actually require, state chartered banks to create the money to pay for the roads and bridges. You know, when I say create the money, money today just numbers in a computer. You go in for a loan, they don't go down to the bank and haul up uh, piles of feathers or uh, cash. They make an entry in your account. That money goes into your account, and if you want cash or bills, you write a check against it, and then you can get the paper, which is all it is, is paper, which is evidence that you have that money uh, on deposit because you just took this loan and you put it into your account. 
So state chartered banks, they govern the operations of the state chartered banks. Years back, a switch was made from the evidence of wealth that used to be, because you know, you'd go in and you'd have your labor, your gold stamped into coins, and that was wealth money, and that was changed in the big swindle of 1913 with the Federal Reserve, and all that has taken place since then. And this is a little pamphlet, I'll send you this, uh, it's a little pamphlet about the switch. Let's see, this was written by uh, my colleague Gregory Soderberg in conjunction with Byron Dale. Byron Dale is kind of a go-to guy on these money issues. He wrote a book with Gregory Soderberg that I'll show you in a moment. But if you want to know how the switch took place, how did we get robbed like this by the change from a wealth money system to a debt money system? Because you know with debt money, when you borrow $100, you've got to pay back with the interest, whatever it is. You have to pay back 103 or 105. Well, where would you get it? You have to capture somebody else's loan principal. That $100 will be my loan principal. Then I'll have to pay back the loan principal plus the interest. Where will that interest come from? That's why the nickel trolley ride that I took as a kid is now a bus ride for $2.50. Or unless you're a geezer like me, you get it for a lower fare if it's not rush hour. It's cheaper when you don't want to go, and it's more expensive when you want to go. So this is the switcheroo. I'd be happy to send you that pamphlet. No charge. I'll take care of that. The powers over the Minnesota State Chartered Banks, I explained to you that the state audits it, not the Fed. Federal Reserve had nothing to do with Minnesota State Chartered Banks. And here's Byron Dale's book. Let's see how that shows up. Nice. Modern Money Secrets. Byron goes here and it's beautiful. Shows pictures of, of the bills, what he used to say on the bills, that this is legal tender, payment for all private debts and gold or whatever. The Hill goes through this book and shows the different bills and how they were changed over time in order for this big rob job. You know, these weren't a bunch of guys that went in and pulled out the gun and robbed us. They take decades or dozens of years in order to do that. That's a disadvantage that the people have. We operate closer to our needs, and the guys that rob us big time, the big robber bank, they plan out way ahead. They don't start a railroad tomorrow morning, decide to do it, start building that suite. They plan ahead, get the land, get thousands of acres or dozens of miles on either side of the railroad, so they've got all the trees and the minerals, yeah, a good, good rob job. But I'm pleased that I've had a wonderful life, uh, still going pretty strong, and I'm happy that I can flush the toilet and that gets taken care of, switch on the light and the light goes on. So I'm indebted and I'm thankful to those people that do that. This is the greatest time in the history of the world for us accomplishing all the things that we want. We've got the little nanotechnologies happening. Uh, we have all the uh, computer technology and wiring. Everything is all set to make the big move. What's the big move? Is to follow this book, get the state chartered banks to create the money for all our roads and bridges, city, county, state, township. And that money can either be returned to the people, eliminate the gasoline tax, that be something. Billion dollars go right back, lickety split, into people's pockets. Uh, we could eliminate the sales tax on vehicles. A lot of this money goes for roads and bridges. And build state of the art roads and bridges. I saw one um, video the other day. Somebody showed where a moose was crossing the road and there were solar panels built into the road. We could do things like that build roads that generate electricity or heat or warmth to keep the road warm, use geothermal uh, in order to do that, we have terrific opportunities. And we can all do it now. The only reason we're not doing it now is because we don't have the money. So you can't just kick out the money because you want to uh, build a farm over here or you want to build it. It has to be something that benefits everybody. 
roads and bridges, repair and maintenance and construction of them benefits everybody. Whether you're living or dying, you're coming or going, uh, you've got to use the roads and the bridges. And that's what I want us to do. That's what my colleagues want to do. Gregory Soderberg is a very dear friend. Ran for lieutenant governor with me a couple of times. Uh, uh, bailed out this time. I don't know why, but I didn't uh, press him on it. I've got a couple of candidates uh, that I'm considering for lieutenant governor to run with me as an independent person. No Democrat, no Republican. Our party, we're the Earth Protectors. We're the Earth Protector Party. You can look me up on Google, Earth Protector, or Google Leslie Davis, and you'll see all my issues. Well, one of my issues is to stop the forced fluoridation of our bodies through our public water. The public water treatment plants are required by law to fluoridate the water. They get this fluoride crap from Florida. It's called hydrofluorosilicic acid. They use it to fluoridate the water. It's poison. It causes little streaks on kids' teeth. Not all kids, not everybody is affected the same way by different contaminants, but we don't need the fluoride in the water. My old buddy, Dr. Paul Conant, heads up the Fluoride Action Network, and he talks about it. He'll come here to Minnesota. If you want to invite him here to Minnesota and bring him in, he'll come here and debate whoever you have about fluoride. They don't fluoridate in Europe. They're knocking it out of lots of places, in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, not fluoridating the water. And the teeth of the people in Europe are as good as the people in America. We need to get that fluoride. The reports that I'm reading from Dr. Conant show that it damages the portion of the brain. It's called the pineal gland. Some people call it pineal. P-I-N-E. So it looks like pine. I call it pineal gland. The pineal gland damages it. It lowers IQ of people and children. It's been shown. The reports show it. Some argue that, oh, they were done in China or this or that, you know. Or they're good reports. They were reviewed by Harvard. Harvard agrees that fluoride at certain levels, the levels that we're getting, lower IQ in children. So we don't want the fluoride in the water. As governor, I don't make the law, but I'm sure I'll have enough influence working with the legislature to get them to knock it out. They're cheating us. They're selling it to the water treatment plants through Mosaic Corporation. Mosaic gets this stuff from Florida. Florida phosphate fertilizer mines, they've got to dump it someplace. It's a poison, hazardous waste. You'd have to bury it in some hazardous waste landfill. So what do these clever guys do? They go and sell it. They sell it to the Mosaic Corporation. And I think there's another transaction there where Mosaic sells it to another entity that sells it off to the water treatment plants. And in Minneapolis, for example, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for this fluorosilicic acid. It comes in big bags, and it says it's got a big skull and crossbones on it. Uh, I have one of those. I don't know where it is. It's in my little bag. I got a lot of stuff. So we want to do that. We want to get the fluoride out of the water. We don't want forced medication. They're putting enough stuff in the water, but using river water for drinking water, you've got to do some correcting. So they chlorinate it, then they dechlorinate it, blah, blah, blah. No fluoride. Actually, if you call me, here's my number. This equipment is a little new for me, otherwise I'd put up the numbers. That's my phone number, Leslie Davis, and I'll send you a uh, no fluoride Minnesota button. So I'll leave that number up there. Hopefully you'll write it down and you'll call me. Call me if you have a problem. Call me if you're concerned about something. Call me if you want to help. Call me if you have an idea of somebody who might make a great lieutenant governor, good partner with me in managing the executive branch of the state of Minnesota. We want to ban high fructose corn syrup. High fructose corn syrup is terrible. Sugar is the enemy of mankind. It's the most horrible thing. And I know the sugar beet people, they pay millions of dollars in Minnesota, the sugar beet outfit, millions of dollars in lobbying money and payoffs uh, to legislators, just like the Dental Association does on the fluoride to the health department and the state representatives. But you know, I just want to give a shout out to Senator Champion, who sponsored a bill that would have rescinded 
the fluoride mandate. And then if the city wants to fluoridate their water, they can do it locally if they vote for it, but not a statewide mandate that all public water treatment plants fluoridate. So hooray to you, Senator Champion. I appreciate that. Always kind to me, always respectful, and good man, good man. Who win again? Actually, I wonder, well, I won't think about that. And the high fructose corn chip, you know, Pepsi and Coke, they're bidding for the contracts to Florida to um, uh, sell the soda in the schools. So we're so concerned about the children that we're going to sell them soda in school and use that money for the school? Not on my watch. There will be no high fructose soda machines in the schools when Leslie Davis is governor. And that's going to happen pretty soon, within the next year. I want to legalize cannabis hemp. They're two different things. Cannabis and hemp are two separate plants. Hemp is not something you're going to sit back, you can smoke a bushel of it and you're not going to get high. And the cannabis is needed for the medicinal portion uh, of our pharmacology a la Davis, not the pharmacology a la Rockefeller, which is what we have. You know, that's how we got into this whole medical fiasco. They run the medical industry in the world, whether it's licensing of doctors or hospitals. They started it off, and they are the American Medical Association. And they hate cannabis and hemp because of the miraculous thing that they can do. That's why uh, Governor Dayton's ex-wife was Rockefeller, and she gave him hundreds of thousands of dollars to get elected to Minnesota, and he opposes it. He loves everything, but he opposes cannabis, legal cannabis. What a jerk for doing that. But I don't know, why do you think that uh, a lighter Rockefeller Dayton messenger gave Dayton hundreds of thousands of dollars to run for his elect, and he just beat Tom Emmer by a hair. And I came in with a lot of money at the last minute, at the first minute, and all of that. So we want to legalize that and have fuel and food and fiber and jobs and industry and fabrics and things and stop this fence-to-fence -fence corn and soybean stuff. Start planting farmers. Start thinking about how you're going to handle uh, this hemp cannabis situation because we could grow in Minnesota. If there's one thing Minnesota farmers know how to do, it's uh, grow. And we want them to grow the right crop. That's GMO soybean and how do we get into this mess? But I can straighten it all out. You work with me and we'll straighten it out. Nobody's going to get hurt. The farmers are not going to get hurt. But the sugar beet growers, they've got their heads up now. They can do other things. They can plant other crops, begin to plant. What's going to happen if people stop buying the sugar? Sugar's enemy number one. Enemy number two, diet, nutrition, all of that, wheat. The wheat that we have, the bread and rolls that we eat, and I do still eat some, I've cut back significantly, but that's the, not the wear, amber waves of grain. This is the new genetically engineered wheat that we're growing. Wheat, bad. Sugar, one. Wheat, two. You're not going to like the third one. It's called dairy. You know, they're shooting these cows with uh, antibiotics and feeding them stuff that they're not supposed to eat. They're growing soybean and, and, and feed that are GMO uh, derived to feed cattle. Cattle are not designed to eat that kind of stuff. So they're feeding them the poison. So those are the three. The fourth one are most of the cooking oils. I'm not talking about uh, coconut oil or virgin olive oil and so on, but like you'll see canola and things like that, bad. I've researched it. I've looked into it. You want to debate me? You want to argue with it? I'll bring along enough books to fill a library about that. So those are the four poisons in your diet. I'm not going to stop. At least cut back. Cut back on the sugar. You're walking out with the, from the corner store with a bottle of pop this big. <laughs> Come on. Knock it off. Cut down your sugar, your wheat, your um, dairy, and don't use those cooking oils for the cooking. Most of it doesn't even need. You can kind of uh, put it in a toaster oven and get it cooked. And then my water plan will bring in a billion dollars into the state in new money. Where from? 
You know that refinery down the road, Coke Refinery here and the other one over in uh, South St. Paul? They use billions, with a B, gallons of public water for practically nothing. I want to charge them four cents a gallon. Coke Refinery uses over three billion gallons of water. They'll pay $120 million for that water that they're currently uh, taking for nothing. I'd like to call it stealing, but they're not actually stealing it. They're doing permission of the Department of Natural Resources, which will be under the management of the executive branch, not the legislature. The governor manages the activities of the Department of Natural Resources. So we'll take care of that. And the water plan, 3M company, goody goodies, you know, give grants and lots of payout to lots of people to shut them up. Like the American Dental Association takes care of all the legislators to keep the fluoride going. You would think, why would the uh, Dental Association want the fluoride uh, in the water to prevent cavities? It doesn't prevent cavities. It makes streaks on the teeth. And why they want it. Lyle Schwarzkopf was a good old Republican in the late 60s that advanced that legislation. He should be drawn and quartered for doing that. I contacted him, asked him if he would rescind his position, and he rejected me. So we don't have Lyle Schwarzkopf on board. So there's a couple of the issues. One of the first things we have to do, we have to reduce this debt. And you reduce the debt by bringing wealth money into circulation through the money plan to build all our roads and bridges and maintenance thereof. That'll bring in billions of dollars of wealth money. The city of Minneapolis, Hennepin County, for example, can use their road and bridge uh, construction or maintenance money for something else that they choose. They might want to lower property taxes. So we need to reduce the debt and bring in the money to do the roads and bridges. I explained that to the House Transportation Committee. Uh, Representative Torkelson was very respectful and courteous to me. I want to put a shout out to him. Oh, a lot of the other legislators were there growling away at me, but Torkelson, he's kind of entertained by me because he knows that under the current regime, the money plan is not going to go any place. So I brought 23 copies, seven for the staff, 30 copies, five pages, distributed with the bill, with the plan, how money works, how it comes into circulation. They don't get it. They don't understand it. All day long, they're making decisions about money, 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 and they don't understand where it comes from and how it comes into circulation and how the money plan can work. I said, get rid of your fear. Open up your fist. You know, fear is like a fist. You can't comb your hair with it. You can't kick your nose with it. You can't do much with it. But when you open it up, it's a great tool for petting and loving and taking care of yourself and picking your nose if that's something that you do. But people are afraid. They're afraid what somebody else might say. They're afraid they might not pass the grade. They're afraid they might not get into school. Let go of your fear. Relax. Move forward. Don't worry about it. America is a great country. We need to make it greater. We need to stop killing other people. Minnesota will lead the way. We'll show them how to build state-of-the-art roads and bridges with geothermal, capturing the runoff. It'll be colossal. We'll have it so that the cars, you're not going to have to go, when I get there, you don't have to go through a charging station to charge up your car. It'll charge up as you're rolling along the road. Geothermal, generating whatever is needed uh, to roll the car. State-of-the-art, Buck Rogers stuff. We should have been in it a long time ago. The only reason that we're not we have all the tools to do it. We have the know-how, we have the personnel, we have the resources, we just don't have the money. And if, keep, if you have to get all your money from the banks or what the legislature they're doing now, bonding. Bonding is simply borrowing the money from the banks, guaranteeing the good faith and credit of the people. So we don't want to borrow money for roads and bridges and their maintenance, city, county, state, township. We want to create it in the state chartered banks. They'll do that because that will be the rule. The Department of Commerce writes the rules under which state chartered banks operate. You have to have so much reserve. You have to have this. You have to have so many drivers. You can't open so close to another bank. Whole book of rules about how state chartered banks are supposed to operate. I want to deal 
with the uh, diabetes issue. And the first thing for dealing with the diabetes issue is to address the obesity matter. You know, we got a lot of people overweight, a lot of people obese. They say obese is defined by being 30 pounds over your recommended weight. Well, even if you're 10 or 15 or 12 or 8 pounds over, that's not healthy for you, but um, being 30 pounds over puts you into the obese category. I saw a guy did a television show. He called himself morbidly obese. And I just saw pictures of him. He's in Costa Rica. Costa Rica? Costa Rica. And he's lost 85 pounds. Working on it. Tough to lose 85 pounds. He says the first 60 or 70 uh, wasn't as hard as you get down to where you need to be. They get harder and harder to deal with. So he's on the diet, you know, no sugar, no wheat, no dairy. Get out those oils that are killing you. And we'll be on our way to uh, a wonderful world. There's nothing like feeling good, getting good night's rest, not necessarily sleep, but rest. You don't need sleep as much as you need rest. You could rest during the day. We lay down, you know, uh, you'd be able to rest better at night if you're healthier and don't eat. You know, you're, you're going to have some uh, salty cookies or Cheetos or Fritos or whatever it is that you eat with a soda before you go to sleep. That's not a good idea. Otherwise, uh, you get a good night's sleep, you get up in the morning, ready to work, ready to build America. Here's my number. Write it down. Write it so you might need it later. And here's my name, Leslie Davis. We'll have to put before that the Governor Leslie Davis. I don't want him to spell G-O-V, I want him to spell out Governor. So we went over all the issues about how we're going to approach this diabetes problem, which is the epidemic proportions, and getting worse all the time. You look around and you see what's going on. If you're looking at the young crowd, the young crowd bopping into First Avenue or, or, or scooting along the river, you're not going to see it. But uh, take a cruise down Nicola Wall, and oh, people come out of the restaurant full of their steak and potatoes and bread and everything, and uh, they'll be heading for trouble, and they'll wish they didn't do that along the way. But if we had leadership that spoke about those kinds of things, spoke about the schools, they're not going to run the school, they're not going to teach them, but on my watch, they're going to teach about the money in the schools. So every kid that's going to graduate from elementary school at 12, 13 years old is going to know where the money comes from and how it comes into circulation. And that's what I want to do. So here I am, my first show on the new technology, and it's going to be great for the future. So I'm Leslie Davis, you got my name, you got my number, you got my facts, and if you want to do great stuff, help me get elected. Thanks very much. Bye.